For more on the twists and turns of A-Rod's career, we're joined by Damon Amendolara, or D.A., as he's known. He's a host on the CBS Sports Radio Network. D.A., good to have you here. Good to be here. Uh, I mean, what, what a nutty night. I mean, <laughs> Alex Rodriguez brings drama to just about everything he does. The weather also brought drama last night. Just from the very beginning, it was, it, it, it was a wild scene. It's kind of perfect also that he wears the number 13, right? Because bad <laughs> luck has always seemed to follow Alex Rodriguez, but most of it is own doing. It was the perfect drama play last night because the Yankees have been embittered about the PED scandal, having to pay him despite being roped into such a huge controversy. He's hitting home runs last year. They're winning, but they don't really want him on the team anymore. They sit him this past week. They finally have to give him last night. And then the ovation from the crowd that booed Joe Girardi when they took him out. So it was such an A-Rod night last night. He's such a polarizing figure for all the reasons you just mentioned. But what do you think his legacy will be? And I realize you're going to make fans and enemies as you answer this question. Well, it's complicated. Undoubtedly, talent-wise, Alex Rodriguez is one of the greatest we've ever seen. Numbers-wise, he's one of the greatest we've ever seen. But he's attached to steroids. He's attached to lying. He's attached to cheating. I think ultimately, down the road, the world will soften on steroids. So Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, Alex Rodriguez, I think people will soften on their stance. But it's not going to happen for a long time, 20, 25 years. You know what was very interesting to see was his response when he was asked last night if this was his final game or his last at bat. And he really didn't answer. Um, there's a lot of talk, uh, a lot of um, people think that he's going to play next year, possibly somewhere in Florida. That was a strategic no answer. Yeah. I think he wants to play again. He feels like he can play again. The Yankees don't want him around, but they said he's free to do whatever he wants. So it could even happen as early as September when rosters expand if somebody's interested in bringing him in. But there's only going to be half the league because he can't play the field anymore. So it's only going to be an American League team that has the DH that could use him. Yeah. What about Michael Phelps? I mean, he's all also someone who's now twice said I'm retiring. Do you think this could finally be because it certainly does seem and he's admitted it's a little slower getting out of the pool after he wins the medal these days. Yeah, except that he's stacking gold medals still. And so it's hard to believe that he wouldn't come back for Tokyo in 2020. Ryan Lochte says that he's a guarantee to come back in 2020. But Michael Phelps says, no, I don't want any part of it. I think it comes down to, does Phelps want to go through another four years of rigorous training to get there? If he only had to jump in the pool starting in June of 2020, I think he'd probably do it. But is he willing to commit to another four years of this type of training to get there? I think great athletes live for these moments. I do too. I, no I, question. Hard to I, walk I, away. I would not be surprised if we, if we see him again. DA, thanks very much. No problem.